With everybody so busy on sharing those outlandish computer model runs for clicks, hardly anybody is talking about this sneaky golf threat. I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis, and I'm here to remove the trash from the truth when it comes to the weather. Models are also latching on to a long-range Caribbean threat. We'll get to that a little bit later on into the video. So here it is, this little swirly thing, and there's already a swirl north of the Greater Antilles. This is going to be the system right here, and it's going to try to meander its way over the Bahamas and get out into that region into parts of the eastern Gulf over the next couple of days and by the end of this work week. There's some model support for it, and it's going to be continuing to grow over the next couple of days, likely anyway, the model support. Here is our little entity on the vorticity map or the amount of spin that we have in the atmosphere. I'll remove my telestration and we're going to take this out into the future and just watch the spin that we have here as we go forward in time. This is going to be as we move through Wednesday, Thursday, into Friday. There's not much there, not much there, and then you see it kind of curl a little bit. It's not that strong, it's not that pronounced, but there it is, again, that vorticity makeup in the eastern Gulf. And as we take this out a little further, you're going to see that try to spin up a little bit more as it heads towards the north Gulf Coast. Again, the signal on this particular model run isn't that strong, but we already have some spin. The GFS shows something similar here, even to a lesser degree, as it kind of lifts up all those different colors represent the spin, the brighter the color, the stronger the spin and the low to mid levels of our atmosphere indicating that we do have some kind of developing storm. So those are some of the deterministic models and I wanna show you the brand spanking new AI models. This is the Google model. There's 51 members that make up the overall model, those members. Each one of these blue dots here represents the model thinking that there could be some tropical development. So you see, as we back this up a little bit in time, this is going to be on uh, the 9th of August, then we get the 10th, the 11th, and 12th. So what the models are starting to think and what some of the AI models and deterministic models that we have are starting to think is that this entity that's kind of hanging out over the Turks and Caicos is going to work its way into the southern and eventually eastern Gulf with the possibility of developing over the next couple of days. GFS and Euro ensembles also showing that these are the European ensembles. Each line represents a different member of that ensemble, hinting at some tropical development. Nothing too terribly strong here, at least in these runs, but the water temperature is super warm. So anything that can be even quasi developed getting into this realm needs to be watched closely. As we all know, things can take off quickly in the Eastern Gulf. Uh, strongest member here is 996. That would be still a middle of the road, maybe strong tropical storm. So nothing too concerning, at least on the ensemble plots, even weaker on the GFS ensembles, uh, less members on board, uh, even weaker. Again, the strongest, quote unquote, strongest member is 1009. That's a maybe tropical storm if it gets its act together organizationally. I say this threat, again, is it's here. You never like to get anything swirling into the Eastern Gulf because models sometimes have a hard time catching on to them until it's a little bit too late. We have had, have had so many examples in the past. And again, we already have that entity spinning out here. It's all of this uh, north of the Turks and Caicos, north of the Greater Antilles. And again, likely going to meander around here. Now, there's still some uncertainty. Okay, does it jump down here and interact with Cuba and kind of destroy it all together? Does it move across South Florida and destroy it all together? Uh, but there's enough spin getting out over the eastern Gulf that certainly has my attention. And there's some model support uh, that we need to be watching that going forward. Water temperatures, extremely warm. Again, in the eastern Gulf, all of this is in Celsius, by the way. So we're not talking about below freezing temperatures. That's going to be 31 degrees Celsius. Again, we have upper 80s. That's going to be 87, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the tropical cyclone heat potential. It's the fancy word again for how deeply warm the water is. Again, that's the sea surface temperature, what I just showed you. But where we have uh, the reds and browns and purples on this map here, all of this shaded area, this is where we have super high tropical cyclone heat potential. So not only is the water super warm, that warm water goes down deep. So the idea is that when a tropical system 
or just a cluster of thunderstorms rolls over a certain area, it churns up some cooler water from beneath the surface. When you have the heat potential juiced like this with the yellows, oranges, reds, and blacks on here, that's where there's really not going to be much in the way of that upwelling or that cooler water coming through. So this is the loop current. This is that infamous thing that when hurricanes kind of work through the, uh, the Western Gulf or the Western uh, Caribbean into the Gulf, they find that loop current. And a lot of times, given a upper air environment that's conducive, these things go nuts because they're just so much jet fuel, if you will. If that thing got over here, the tropical heat, uh, tropical cyclone heat potential, it's not all that high, which is good, but the sea surface temperature uh, enough likely to fuel something. So again, there's not a super strong signal here, but we do have that little area of spin moving into the Gulf, and it's always something to watch. For instance, remember those last couple of invents, invests that went across the Northern Gulf? Yeah, those didn't really have any spin to it, and those had an opportunity to develop. So that's why that one caught my eye a little bit. All right, we're gonna move off to the Carolina coast now. And if you're still with me and if you're finding this content helpful and if you want to help be a part of removing some of the hype and that misinformation and the scare tactics that are out there on YouTube, please consider joining the team and subscribing us. I always love to get your weather reports. I would love to also take your thoughts on what these models are saying on this and what we're about to talk about. Please also post that in the comments and consider subscribing if you're finding this content helpful. So this area off the Carolina coastline here, this is what the Hurricane Center has tagged as our really next area for potential tropical development. And there's some decent model support. We've been talking about this as well. These are the latest European ensembles. They kind of tend to keep it offshore now. Some heavy rain possible towards the Outer Banks and Eastern North Carolina. But most of these ensemble members want to keep anything that develops. And there's a, again, decent shot. We do have development here off the Carolina coastline. It wants to take it and kind of skirt the coast and then move on back out to sea. Something similar to what Dexter did, although it was never that close to land. This one developing a little uh, closer to land. Here's the plot. Here is the what we're watching as a whole. Here is Dexter, still a tropical storm. That still is no threat to anybody, which is why there's no time spent on this. This is gonna be continuing to lift up, get sheared out and turn extra tropical. There again is our entity that we're watching that could work its way into the Eastern Gulf and we're gonna to have to watch that because the water temperature is so warm. This is the little entity that the Hurricane Center does have highlighted off that cold front, the same front that helped Dexter form. And then these waves are what's getting all of the buzz on social media. So this middle wave here, that's the one that has some of those model runs going nuts, showing major hurricanes going into places, and those model runs continue to go back and forth on that. So that's why I'm saying you never put stock in these singular model runs. You always need to look at the ensembles. And this map is quite busy. So we're going to take a second and break this down. And again, if you're still with me, hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing if you uh, want to join the team. Here, let me get my Telestrator back out. So again, we've already looked at this one. That's the golf uh, threat there. This is Dexter up here. Note that the Euro has all of the, uh, the second wave curving. Okay, some of the outlandish model runs that I talked about earlier in the video in the intro has it going to the west toward Florida, maybe getting into the Gulf over the next 10 to 12 days. All of the European ensembles that are suggesting development now curve it. Okay, so that's some good news. We, we like that. The one thing I will say is the GFS is still bullish and even more bullish than yesterday at only a couple of these take it away. Always watching for our friends in Bermuda. But you see it right here that a lot of those members do try to keep it further to the west and keep it closer to the greater Antilles, maybe getting it toward the southeast corner of the United States. And as I mentioned in previous videos, 
we're not going to be watching the windshield wiper effect of models showing a major hurricane in New Orleans and then a major hurricane in Florida and then a major hurricane now in South Carolina or North Carolina because that's what the GFS in the Euro AI have done. They've gone back and forth. It's the windshield wiper effect. There may be some growing consensus that we're going to have something to uh, worry about in the next 10 to 14 days, but you really can't put the entire Gulf Coast and Caribbean on alert 7 to 10 to 12 days out into the future, especially when the models have had such a tough time on latching on. For instance, the European model is, you know that meme uh, where there's the guy and the girl and the other girl and he's turning away from his girlfriend and looking at the at the new one? That is what the Euro is doing with these tropical waves. It gets very, very bullish when a wave rolls off. That wave then kind of fizzles out over the main development region, but there's another juicy wave coming off of Africa. So now the European is all bullish on that. And then that one is going to disintegrate as well. The Atlantic is still suffering from major stability issues. This chart here is from Alex Borham, cyclonicweather.com. It is a great tool um, to track the tropics. There's a lot of good nerdy stuff here. And what this graph shows is essentially Atlantic stability. So this is going to be the sea surface temperature anomaly in degrees Celsius minus the global tropics. In order for storms to develop, there needs to be instability. The Atlantic has been super stable. So forgive me for getting a little nerdy right now, but I do want to show you that the background state of the main development region of the Atlantic, it's still not that great. So to have all of these wild model runs plastered all over the place, whenever we just don't have the support on a large scale in the Atlantic, it's super inappropriate. Again, there's waves out there. I'm watching them. You're watching them. Something to be mindful of. We are getting closer to the peak of hurricane season. It is August, but there's just not a lot of support for these things outside of the crazy model run. So this is the zero degree line. Uh, here, the uh, zero anomaly, not zero degrees uh, Celsius. Let me get all my chicken scratch off of here. Whenever the main development region is cooler, so those dots and lines lower than that pink line I just drew, that means that we're largely stable. The world and the globe tropically is competing for rising motion. If it's more stable than its surrounding tropical counterparts across the globe, it's going to be hard for thunderstorms to win that competition on the Atlantic side. Now, there has been some uptick. You see there in the blue line, there has been some uptick. We're on the positive side now of zero. It's still not that great, which is a good thing. And again, I'm kind of in the I'll believe it when I see it camp in terms of can a storm sustain itself through. I mentioned about the Caribbean threat, and that's why I wanted to show you that, that, okay, if a wave can survive into the Caribbean, we might have a shot at getting something. So this is going to be the GFS, and I want to be, the, the first one here, this is out here in the Western Caribbean, that is the first wave. So if, if that wave does in fact go away, I'll move my head out of the way. If that wave does in fact turn, this is not going to be here. Okay, so important to note that. It's this secondary one here, and the, and the Euro is a little more bullish. Those are the GFS ensembles. These are the European ensembles that do show, let me take this further out, a giant cluster of storms. This is going to be August 12th through the 15th. So still in the next 7 to 10 days, still a long way out. That is the wave that is just emerging off of the African coastline. So back here, not that, back here. So that's what the models are latching onto. I will say that 
the Caribbean has gotten a little more conducive. This is the wind shear anomaly now when we're, we're showing blue. That means that it's going to the wind shear in that time range. This is August 12th is lower than normal. We'll take this a little further out. It erodes a little bit, but still when you see uh, whites or blues, that's whenever the wind shear again gets a little bit below normal. The darker the blue, the more below normal it is. Um, so that's something we'd have to watch that the Eastern Caribbean, which has been very hostile for development, is improving. And then there's also going to be a little bit of extra moisture in there. There's still some dry air out here a little bit, but there's a little more moisture, especially in the Central and Western Caribbean. So that is going to be something that I'm watching going forward. By the way, as I kind of jump around here, the reason still for this first wave going up and out on the Euro and then staying to the West on the GFS, it's all about the steering. So that's what I'm going to watch. This is the European uh, model now. It still has our upper low and it still has the way out. The European, by the way, the uh, does not really develop it. The main European doesn't even develop it. So it doesn't even really show up on the map here. So important to note, the GFS uh, builds back the ridge much faster. And that is why it's coming further west. So instead of looking at the model runs in the doom and gloom scenarios this map here means everything as to if that storm is going to threaten the caribbean islands or the united states number one the storm needs to survive a still decently hostile main development region who knows if it's going to survive that number two if it does does it take the way out or does it keep coming west there are still way too many questions. It is still way too far out to be able to post a model like what a lot of people are doing, again, just for clicks, and to have any kind of degree of scientific certainty that anything's coming in. So the moral of this 17-minute video is just be careful what you're looking at. Make sure you find a trusted source, uh, National Weather Service, National Hurricane Center. I hope this channel um, is, a, is a good trusted source for you. We're watching it. Certainly, the, it's August. Any way that rolls off that rolls off of Africa bears watching. In August, of course, we'll keep on uh, tuning into that. In my next videos, we are going to continue to watch all of these waves. I also have a great video on AI tools. I showed you one of the Google AI models. Uh, I'm going to put that in the end cards if you'd like to take a look at that to show you how those AI models work and are different from your typical Euro and GFS that we show here and break down on a daily basis when we make these videos. Alrighty guys, post in the comments where you're tuning in from. I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think is going to evolve in this very convoluted pattern. Post those in the comments. Consider subscribing if you made it this far. I appreciate your support. Thank you a ton for being here. We'll catch you next time.